so we buried him there, and I uh, continued the trip on my own. <laughs> a little bit lighter. I got more teeth in my left pinky than this whole rest stop. Everything I own in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, we're going 20 miles under the speed limit, and I can't see out one side of my Jeep. Two different states, two different fellas, still the ones you love. Yeah, John. Cross <laughs> this cross country podcast, dude. Welcome back to the show. Oh, oops, that's going to be a bleep unless we do a lot of intro stuff. Yeah, exactly. We'll make the intro an hour long. This is going to be very the final little... bit. <laughs> yeah, Let's, we could just play the whole episode in reverse. <gasps> The whole time. That'd be very experimental. I think that this is what the podcast field needs, is these new Austin's, ideas. Austin's a pretty experimental place. A lot of Tevas around. Yeah, dude. Tell me about Austin. Is it magical and full of wonder? <sighs> it's something. It's a lot of something, <laughs> actually. It's a lot. It's There's a lot. <laughs> yeah, right. Keep it weird. Well, yeah, dude. It's definitely that. One of the first things I noticed is that there's stuff everywhere at least along the highway no matter how far out of the city you go it is consistently shopping center after store after mega size store after restaurant mm -hmm. after fast food place forever i don't think i've seen a gap in highway within a hundred miles of austin damn it's, and apparently well carter's hot take is there's nothing to do in texas so open <laughs> restaurant and go to eat and uh, yeah. there's a lot of restaurants, dude. There's so many restaurants. I've only been to like six so far. <laughs> Already? That's more than I've been to in my entire two years living in like Connecticut on my own now, I think. <laughs> well, I wasn't going on my own. I oh, went right. with, uh, God bless. We had Sam and Chris from my med school class that helped Shout me out and Sam Hamza. And Chris. Helped me and Hamza unload the U-Haul on a beautiful million percent humidity, 96 degree day. Jesus Christ. <laughs> in two and a half, three hours of carrying things up, thank God I'm only on the second floor, it was literally two full shirts. I drenched through, changed, drenched through a second. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah. So much People sweat. talk about like when you go out drinking or whatever and breaking the seal, which I think is just a myth and it's just that you're constantly taking in liquid and having to pee it out. But with sweating, breaking the seal is real. Once I feel one drop of sweat... It's not stopping until I literally sit in front of an air conditioner for like five minutes. Take a cold shower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seriously. Absolutely. But yeah, dude, I want to hear about this whole trip. You like had quite the odyssey driving from Connecticut to Austin. Or from Something. Massachusetts. No, Rhode Island to Austin. Massachusetts. Yeah. Well, you slept in the middle. Wait. No. Fall River's Mass. Oh, you're right. My geography, especially of the American variety, is lacking. But okay, from Massachusetts to Austin, Texas. <laughs> I'm much better at Serbia, Ukraine, the whole like... Yeah, you know. the Eastern Bloc is my road, is my wheelhouse, really. Yeah, so we uh, started in Massachusetts, and then it is like, between my old apartment and Molly's, it is, you go through Rhode Island, just because Massachusetts has that weird little hook. Mm -hmm. But uh, started in Mass, got underway at whatever, 5.30, 6 a.m., Mm -hmm. stopped in Rhode Island, state number two, for some IHOP breakfast. Or Hell Denny's, yeah. actually. IHOP was closed. I can't tell the difference. Doesn't matter. They're all the same. <laughs> but it was great. Stopped, saw Ben, thanked him again for all of the essay editing help, for basically being the reason why I'm able to come to Austin for med school. Friend of the podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. The most serious guest we've had. The most educated guest we've had, also, I yeah, would Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the one episode of value. <laughs> Absolutely. And then uh, continued through Connecticut, state number three. Mm -hmm. And we pulled off, you know, 20, 30 miles before New York, expecting it to be rough. And that's when the fun started, because as oh, we got cool. underway, the rear window rolled down and wouldn't go back up. <laughs> and it was raining that morning. Dude, it's always raining. Of course it's raining. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So pulled off on... Uh, I forget, 15, 105, 30. There's been a lot of highways in the last week and a half. Right, right. Whatever that, that beautiful, like, Merritt Parkway, you know, all trees and stuff between the corner yeah. of Connecticut and New York. Pulled off onto the shoulder, turned it off, tried to turn it back on, engine sputtered and wouldn't turn over. Oh, my God. Is the window right? still open at this point? Yes. Christ. We are, I don't know. Two and a half hours into the drive. <laughs> into your 40-hour expedition. <laughs> Turn it off. Pray for a second. Wait. Turns over. 
Window goes back up. Okay, we're on the road again. We're back in business, baby. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I guess maybe the battery's going. We just have to not stop again for the next four days. <laughs> so that was Easy awesome. Enough. Shortly after that, leaving Connecticut, we hit the start of traffic. Mm -hmm. Traffic for the last 25 miles. Traffic into the city. Traffic getting to and across the GW Bridge. It's all like stop and go. I can feel my engine screaming under the weight <laughs> of the overloaded trailer. 1,500 pounds above what my Jeep's rated to tow. Dude, Brilliant doing boost. that stop-and-go traffic with an overweight trailer attached to your manual Jeep, I can't imagine doing that for that many hours. It was probably two hours worth of, like, more or less stop-and-go through New York. And then finally we out the other side and we're in Jersey. Yeah. State number five. Yeah. And the, probably the best one along the way, too. Oh, God, thank goodness it didn't take long to get out of that state. <laughs> Continue through Jersey, we're doing great. Continue through Maryland, we're doing great. Just lots mm -hmm. of, like, highway construction and more traffic spots. Right, right. At this point, it's, I don't know, noon, 1 p.m. We've been driving for six hours, minus our stop, well, plus our stop time, actually. Right. Still hitting traffic, needing to pee every two and a half hours. Hamza and I did not sync up well at the start. Oh, so like, no. <laughs> He was good, and then I had to pee, and then I was good for five hours, and he's like, oh, can we pull over? <laughs> so, at Classic. one point, yeah, at one point going around, like, Bethesda, around the D.C. area, it's whizzing traffic in between slowdowns and stops and accidents, and we are on a shoulder as wide as the trailer, getting out to pee on the side of the highway. <laughs> Worst oh, I'm stop sure you of guys the are trip. the most popular guys on the road, yeah. <laughs> Worst stop of the trip. And uh, back in, more traffic, more traffic. We get into Virginia, state number six. Hell and yeah. there's more traffic because there's more highway construction. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At this point, I'm doing the math out, we're like two and a half, three hours behind my estimated time. <laughs> right, yeah. Because as we realized the day before, your boy did not account for the slowdown in towing speed and also the traffic. Right, okay, okay. So we're constantly updating, like, ah, oh, gonna be later, ah, oh, gonna be later. Yeah. Eventually, we make it to Charlottesville, where Hamza has a friend. Nice. So stop number two, we had Ben in Rhode Island, Erica in Charlottesville, mm -hmm. and we, <laughs> getting to her apartment complex is like, like 16 loop abouts to get off the highway <laughs> the exit shut down i'm like gritted with stress yeah, and then we dude. get there yeah we get there not at 4 p.m like planned but at 7 30. okay so just a tad off <laughs> a little bit right we finally get through the narrow hilly roads with speed bumps and pull into her parking lot hums is like Right here, go forward. She said, this is where the trailer parking is. It's a dead-end lot, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm like, ah, uh, whatever. We'll take six spots and deal with it later. <laughs> yeah, I'll be that guy. Dude, I remember when Hamza and I moved into this house, we had rented... Uh, or Hamza had rented a trailer to tow his car. And, dude, dealing with those things... Driving normally, like, whatever. It's, it's not the easiest thing, but it's doable. Learning to back one of those things up is an absolute skill that, if not practiced, can really screw you when it's needed. Yeah, and don't forget the uh, additional effort of having a pivot point in between the two <laughs> portions of vehicle. Right, yeah. Oh my god. It was great. Mm. But uh, Charlottesville, incredibly adorable, hella cute. We mm -hmm. went to a nice little barbecue restaurant that was dog-friendly, so there's, like, live music. I had That's two beers awesome. because I needed it after 13 hours of the day so far. Yeah, yeah. It was great. We spent, like, an hour and a half there, so, you know, we're leaving again at, like, maybe 8.30, 8.45 on the way to yeah. Ties. And now we're off, headed to Roanoke for the night. Mm-hmm. And that's where we got to all of the mountain highways, where <laughs> doing my best... I am in fourth gear going 40 miles an hour on a 70 mile per hour highway with one headlight out at night. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I wished it was just traffic again. <laughs> so some slowdowns there too. A lot of trucking around that area. Virginia, mm. Tennessee, basically everything after Virginia or starting in Virginia. Lots of tractor trailers. Mm. So chugging along uphill. Coasting as much as we can downhill without speed wobbles on the trail. <laughs> right, right. Jesus, man. 
is great. Finally Dude, get I to find talk. driving I find driving so stressful in like a lot of just normal situations, like just driving in a city or near a city, like kind of stresses me out. In the last night I had to of... pick up Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, the immediate suburbs. Like last night I had to pick up Hamza from the airport and like just like dealing with like getting to the terminal. I'm like, uh I like totally passed it one time. I was like, not worth it. It's gonna do a full loop and try again. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was not ideal. I will say, I mean, the trailer added about a foot on either side of the width of my Jeep. So there are mm. portions, especially going through all of the highway construction that we did, where there's concrete barricades four inches outside the white line, and my trailer wheels are mm, touching both white lines. <laughs> like, the margin of error to stay in my lane was so slim. <laughs> I'm like laser focused the whole time and good yeah. thing John brought six five hour energies and we remembered to take one of them <laughs> dude that's so funny because John just texted me when he was coming to like hang out with us before you moved out and he was like hey do you need anything and just as a joke I said five hour energies and plan B and then he actually brought them I was like alright alright the keep five the hour going. energies <laughs> not the plan B I think yeah no didn't bring that at least I didn't see it he might have popped it in the car <laughs> pre-game yeah exactly <laughs> but uh yeah that was all lovely thank honestly thank god i did a year plus of emting in boston because like driving the box trucks down one way you know boston streets yeah really gave me some stress management practice for the wide load yeah your training came in handy <laughs> <sighs> thank goodness <laughs> but yeah we eventually i told ty originally like 7.30, 8 p.m. is our target arrival. We get there at 11.15 <laughs> at night. Okay, another, like, nice little three-hour difference. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it was very upsetting to see the GPS estimate and to watch every three minutes <laughs> it go up by one minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For 17 hours. <laughs> yeah. Just constantly disappointing you. <laughs> Yeah, whatever the math worked out to when we were in the car to when we left, it was 14 and a half hours of driving, 17 hours start to finish. So yeah. some breaks in between for meals and lots mm. of pee breaks. Yeah, But we get there, and he's watching nice. the UFC fight cards, so we have <laughs> the half of a pizza that he hadn't finished. <laughs> this man has no food, no, like unstocked apartment. He'd moved in four days before we got there. Oh, I didn't realize it was that recent. Okay. Yep, brand new. He graduated from school, had a couple weeks vacation, and then moved to Roanoke and was like unpacking until the day before we got there. Okay, okay. <laughs> Still, gracious host. Great mm, time. Absolutely. We watched the UFC fight card until, I don't know, 1230 or so. Yeah. And then Smash comes on. Absolutely. We love Smash. And I'm trying to lay down, and Ty's shit-talking me, so I get up and play a game, and then lay back down on the couch, and then the shit-talk... We're up till 2.30 playing Smash Bros. 3 a.m. <laughs> what was the goal in terms of bedtime? 11. Okay. <laughs> Before we got there. <laughs> but there were video games. <laughs> yeah, Mom. Well, the beautiful thing was I had kind of overestimated the time to Nashville and originally we were going to stop in I think Knoxville for one of Hamza's friends but we ended up nixing that stop so mm -hmm. our following day only needed to be like six hours and 20 minutes by GPS so eight and a half hours for us yeah and we were like all right we can leave at 9 a.m and still get there by dinner time okay. word so you know got a rousing five hours of sleep absolutely it's all you back need. back up and at him <laughs> and uh Incredibly, we fit more things into the trailer at that stop because Ty had about 70 pounds worth of medical school textbooks he gave me. Oh my god, dude, I was there when we packed that friggin' thing. It was, like, completely full, at least I thought. <laughs> yeah, and I was hearing new sounds from the motor throughout that day. Like, oh, it wasn't god. good. It was already overloaded. We open it and stuff starts falling out. We hold it in while we load more textbooks. Yeah. Plug it back up, lock it, let's go. Oh, dude, I really wish you, like, I know that you were obviously short for time in this whole adventure, but I really wish you stopped at, like, a way station just to, like, like, one of those things for, like, big trucks, just out of curiosity, like, how much am I fucking myself here? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't. 
ignorance yeah, was right. bliss in that case. That, absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Oh, my mic's a little loud. Hold on. Yeah, it, uh... There we go. As we were going, I was just repeating the mantra, like, this is bad, I'm fucked, the Jeep is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good mantra to have. Yeah, right? Hamza, <laughs> bless his heart, is counseling me on unstressing, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> This Facts feels don't like lie, though. reasonable stress. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I own in bumper to bumper traffic, we're going 20 miles under the speed limit, and I can't see out one side of my Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> we are down to stress, and we lost our battle a long time ago. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, second day, much smoother, eight hours, whatever, two, three stops, and uh, mm. coast into Nashville. God bless a whole house, showers, home-cooked meal. Thank oh, you to my man, aunt, uncle, dude. and cousin. Great. Bless up. And, and it was, that was when we, Tennessee was when we really started to notice the weather change because Hamza went for a run when we got there just to stretch his legs, and he got like 0.9 miles in and was just dying to death. <laughs> <laughs> so we buried him there, and I uh, continued the trip on my own. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit lighter. Yeah. <laughs> it did wonders for my mental health. <laughs> no honestly thank goodness i had him not to trade off driving because too much liability for him to have all of my things under his control yeah but it's a lot to put on someone just like the extra energy he'd play some monster hunter next to me and then like this is what's gonna keep me going <laughs> <laughs> smash bros in the front seat i'm rocking to it hell yeah he's ready to kick your ass now he learned that there's a short hop combo built in Ooh, Ooh. you're screwed oh yeah dude that's huge. I don't even, I don't utilize that tech, but maybe I'm going to have to start learning. You fucking better. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we get to Nashville. We're chilling. It's good. Mm. Easy-ish night. We get to bed 11, maybe. Like, much more reasonable. On time-ish, yeah. Uh, excuse me. And then I realized that I have a friend who also helped with editing essays at Vanderbilt Med School that I had not planned to stop and see. So, like, that night and then the next morning, I'm like, hey, can I swing by and say hello and thank you? Yeah, yeah. And she, another Erica, actually. Hey. It's like, yeah, but uh, I'm going for a run till, like, 7.30, and then I have to be in class at 8, so that's my window. <laughs> so <laughs> No shower in between? <laughs> well, I think, like, stop home, shower, run to class. Okay, and, uh, okay. We'll assume that she showered up. Yeah, yeah. We'll give her the in benefit heat, of the doubt on this one. So we wake up, Hamza comes downstairs, and I've, like, already made breakfast burritos for the car. We pack up some sandwiches. I chug a oh, whole yeah. cup of hot coffee. Like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Jump in the car and make it to her class building at 7.56 as she's walking <laughs> up on the same road. Literally, I really like, hope this was worth it, dude. <laughs> We're in, like, the middle of the medical school campus on, like, an emergency vehicle-only roundabout. Just leave the car with Freya in it and the hazards on and get out and, like, power walk alongside her for 150 feet. It was great to see you. Thanks again for all the essay help. Sorry I didn't plan this more ahead of time. Bye. Take care. <laughs> Run back to the car, and we are on the way for the second long one. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, at Good this thing point, you left we... your watchdog protecting literally everything you own. <laughs> yeah, God bless her. She, it's Freya, so she wasn't making a fuss, but she more or less just sat posted in the back seat, stressed for seventeen <laughs> hours the first day, okay. then nine the second. Yeah, it wasn't great for her, but she made it. It sounds Lost. like it wasn't great for either of you. So at least you had each other. We were on the same page there. Exactly. Yeah, that's important. One wavelength. Yeah. So we're back in the caravan, and it's 8 a.m., and we are going again Hell yeah. <laughs> for another, like, 680-mile day, 700-mile, I don't know, a lot. Yeah. And uh, at that point, we were basically doing fractions to keep ourselves going. Like, we're 52% of the way done by miles. We're 12% oh, yeah. done with today by time. <laughs> it's like what you do when you're on a treadmill, and you're trying to think about anything but how much running sucks. And so you're just like, all right. You're constantly, like, breaking down. Math. All right. I have one quarter left. I have one eighth left, whatever. <laughs> exactly. That's how I've done running my whole life, is just fractions. Yeah, just try to do some math. <laughs> you can do 10 steps, right? Now do 12,000 10 steps or whatever. <laughs> <sighs> We're on the way and cruising. We stopped in Memphis at a beautiful park to see another mm. of Hamza's friends. 
which was honestly lovely. Yeah. So now we're two and two and two. Well, I guess three and two if we count my family as a stop of visiting people. Mm-hmm. And he picked this awesome wide open spot, like lake views, little outdoorish cafe, dog friendly. So we're sitting outside at a, ca- a cafe table. He and Hamza get to catch up. It's real nice. And uh, then we continue. And actually, on the way out, I added three minutes by going back out of the park the way we'd come instead of taking a right. And that, in 2,100-ish miles of driving, was the only wrong turn made during the whole trip. Dude, that's actually insane to me. Because I make wrong turns going to places that I visit regularly. (laughs) Like, on the exit, just, like, missing exits. And that is with an unencumbered car. (laughs) Like, (laughs) GPS telling me exactly where to go. (laughs) So kudos to you for that. (laughs) Laser focused. (laughs) Yeah, really. No uh, room for error. Yeah, it was literally no room for error. But we're continuing. And we cross Memphis into... Oh wait, let's let's count it. We had Massachusetts, Rhode mm-hmm. Island, Connecticut, New York, Virginia, Jersey, Jersey, Delaware. We also passed through, but blink and you'll miss yep. it. Okay. Maryland, Tennessee was state number nine. Okay. Into, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right across Memphis is Arkansas. So mm-hmm. we fill up. We filled up on gas. Twelve miles before the border, with the goal being to not have to step foot in Arkansas. At all. Right. Of course. Who wants to be in <laughs> like, Arkansas? Exactly. Four or four and a half hours. Like, now if we have to pee, we hold it. <laughs> and we're going and we're going and it's Arkansas. And it's just Arkansas. And it's <laughs> an awful lot of Arkansas. <laughs> and it never stops being Arkansas. <laughs> Forever. But mm. yeah, state number 10, Arkansas, baby, all day. And it was like, yeah. whatever, four and a half, five hours through Arkansas. What does the, like, then, the uh, landscape look like on this drive? Is it just like a white void of nothing? <laughs> it's a, yeah, the SpongeBob episode where Squidward <laughs> yeah. breaks the time machine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, is, if you that look out scene th- was based on Arkansas. <laughs> if you look out for too long, soul gets sucked like a dementor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was What's rough. the spell? Uh, to be Dementors. Expecto Patronus. That's Expecto the one, Patronum? Yeah. Whatever Latin bullshit. Yeah, I'm glad that you know it, because that could have been bad. Yeah, I'm glad I studied as part of the yeah. med school entrance exams. <laughs> Defense <laughs> and, against uh, the dark arts. Yup. And, uh, <laughs> let me tell you, one of Arkansas's favorite things ruined one of my favorite things which is portmanteau when you cram two (gasps) words together and make one we know i love it oh yeah we passed easily a half dozen town names and billboards that were just like ark and strong (laughs) like the peak of creativity in this state was (laughs) blending a word that started with s after Arkans. Yeah, Arkan and sucks, it, dude. It quickly made me start to hate the thing. Arkan sucks my ass. <laughs> yeah, kind of. And we're finally coming up on maybe the one cool town name because it's half Texas, but Texarkana. I guess you can see the naming convention there. Yeah, It straddles yeah. the border between the two states. Okay. And it's like 40 miles away. So the Texas border, 40 miles away. My Jeep has 65 miles to empty. Yes. We're getting there. 30 miles away. My Jeep has 50 miles to empty. Hmm. 20 miles away. My Jeep has 30 miles to empty. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I no am, mathematician, but uh, something doesn't add up here. <laughs> the trailer weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're coming up like 15, 12 miles outside of Texas. And I am bin on E. I done bin E, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm empty as fuck. Yeah, basically. So like six exits before we made it free of Arkansas, we had to pull off and fill up on gas. And let uh. me tell you, it was the most dis... I, I couldn't decide between dismal and disgusting. So dismal mm-hmm. gusting. Oh, the most the worst dismal word. <laughs> gusting pit stop I had been to in my life. What was so <sighs> bad about it? You could tell people don't have healthy diets in Arkansas based on the restrooms mm. alone. How many teeth did you see? Genuinely, way less than the normal amount. <laughs> and none of them were the regular color. I got more teeth in my left pinky than this whole rest stop. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, a lot of toothy teratoma looking. No, I don't mean mm. to be mean, but uh Yeah, of course. Arkansas has a bit of a a reputation and I'll go so far as to say that my understanding of the state was not upended by what I saw. Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. It fit the it f- mold that you've been told. Yeah, it was just like, uh, yeah, I was right to not want to be here. Mm, mm, okay, <laughs> and, uh, okay. I, the big thing was, I was actually really, because, like, I filled up the car when Hamza went inside to go to the bathroom, and then we swapped and he watched the car. I was mm. genuinely worried that my <laughs> co-pilot might be the victim of a hate crime in the 80 <laughs> seconds between... <laughs> <laughs> they get you I don't quick, think I, dude. You can't take your eyes off him for a sec. <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up to him, but I was legitimately worried. And I generally think that I do a decent job assuming the best. Like, I was having conversations with people at the gas pumps and yeah, being yeah. friendly and everything. But especially as I walked in afterwards and back out, I was worried. I'm glad yeah. he came back out. It, it was maybe something to be ashamed of but genuinely i thought that crossed my mind like yeah uh, it was it was based in empathy can't be too mad at that exactly guard dog frey is not going to help too much oh yeah no definitely not so we're back on the road and mm-hmm. still driving we're i don't know 9 hours 9 and a half hours into the day at this point mm-hmm. of driving not counting the hour stop in memphis and whatever else mm. Finally hit Texas, and immediately, things are bigger. Like, the, the lights above the highways are easily 130 feet tall. <laughs> the roads are wide enough that I can comfortably drive the trailer, probably oh, to accommodate yeah. all the dually trucks. Right, right. And immediately, like, gigantic billboards, massive store. Every, it, it, was, it felt like Texas immediately. <laughs> right, right. From the, from the lore that I've been told of Texas. <laughs> Mm-hmm. One ring to rule them all. I, re- I read that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's nuts. Like, their highway system, it'll be the one you're driving on on the ground, and then, like, on-ramps and other highways, like, five tall. So some of them are 115 feet in the air highway. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just... No, Texas roads built are on awesome a different too. scale. They're, the roads there are awesome, too, because they don't have to deal with, like the shitty seasonal weather that we have for the most part, except for that one time in the past year. But other Mm. than that, they're pretty sick. So they're all like concrete and super smooth and super wide. And yeah, just nice to be on. It felt so good after getting through all of new England and (laughs) the incredible amount of highway construction that Virginia had with that Mm. trailer system. Yeah, no, it it was relaxing relatively Mm. despite like the sheen of just road trip grease on me. I know exactly the grease you're talking about. <laughs> I was trying to come up with an alliteration for it, but I couldn't think of anything G that made sense for driving. Griving, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm drawing yeah. a blank on that one. But uh, I spent 25, 30 minutes of Texas Highways just trying to title that in my head and never came up with a good <laughs> word for it. Oh, well. If I think of something, we can come back to it. Exactly. But yeah. <laughs> I brought it up to Hamza, same thing. Like, oh, I guess if we think of something. <laughs> right, right. And it's been a week. <laughs> <laughs> still waiting for him to get back to me on that one. Yeah, yeah. He's still thinking about it. I know the story is really stretching long, but so did the drive, so... <laughs> no, yeah, I'm loving it. I'm enraptured. <laughs> Finally, it is dark, and we're getting to Dallas, and I'm like, okay, texting Monus, another... God bless him, great friend, great connection, hosted me and Freya for the night. Mm -hmm. And 15-ish minutes outside of Dallas is where Hamza's third friend that he was visiting lived. And a couple times we were like, what's the plan? Are you going to, you know, crash there? Are you going to just visit and then have her drop you back off and you'll stay at Monus's too? Are we reconvening in the morning? Mm He's like, he texted her but didn't really get a good answer from her. So eventually, like the... 13 or 14 hours into the day i've got tunnel vision i'm like we are 11 miles away monis we will see you soon yeah and as i am getting off the highway i'm like we are only 10 minutes away and hamza goes from jillian's (laughs) no from (laughs) monis's and he's like oh i thought you were dropping me off at jillian's no we'd love to hear that at this point (laughs) 
that was one option that was aired, but I never got that confirmation. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so exit, hit like two no. more Dallas tolls, back on, three more tolls on the way. Like, sorry, Monus, it will be 9 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Get to her, uh, like, apartment complex, and every 80 feet... To get to the back of the complex <laughs> is an aggressive speed bump. <laughs> <laughs> the worst stop. Like the most I can, inconvenient. <laughs> I can hear my belongings smashing against one another as I roll over every one of these. Uh, uh, get there, drop Hamza off. You are getting a ride back to me in the morning, right? Yup. Confirmed. <laughs> yup. Hundred percent. Word. Thank you, my dude. Appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Right. Roll back over and park next door in like a hotel parking lot for guests only next door to Monus's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And God bless him. He scooped me and Freya. We dropped her off in the apartment, set her up with food and water, and went immediately to Freebird, which is like a Texas exclusive better Chipotle, mm -hmm. where the dude hooked us up. Like they nice. were almost out for the night so i got the monster which is like two wraps all rolled into one burrito oh, yeah dude it could not have been less than a two pound burrito it was <laughs> easily that with <laughs> yeah. like i swear to you the largest burrito i've eaten it was like 14 inches long <laughs> <laughs> oh my god unbelievable pop back over to monus's watch castlevania for a bit both chowed on the burritos went nice. to bed and then we were home free. We wake up, I get to the parking lot in the hotel area, load up Freya, 10 minutes later, Hamza gets dropped off, and we are a go. Mm. The final stretch. So whatever Let's it go. turned out to be, you know, three hours and 15 minutes was actually four and a half hours, but we get to, actually we pull off 15 minutes outside of Austin so I can finally take my local only drug test for school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then continued on to the apartment. I left Hamza in the car with Freya, walking to the leasing office, ready to get this shit going. Mm -hmm. And they're changing the locks on my apartment, so we have to wait for like an hour before I have keys <laughs> and can get in. <sighs> uh. <sighs> but luckily, we got the keys, we got inside, left Freya there, started carrying things, and then shortly after, those two beauties, again, shout out Sam and Chris, Mm -hmm. Got there, finished carrying everything everything else in, split off to shower. I dropped the U-Haul, dropped Hamza to do some basic grocery shopping, went to my vehicle inspection, remembered that my headlight was out, and immediately I failed the inspection. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Which means that the appointment for my Texas registration the next morning was a no-go, and I had to right, reschedule right. that. <laughs> Nice. We love that. <laughs> Got back together, showered, and then went to a restaurant to meet the dudes and finally chill. Yeah. And that we was kind home. of the end of the Odyssey. Oh. Except that that night. No! <laughs> let this me is the tell after you, credit scene in the Marvel movie. <laughs> dude, that night, use the bathroom. We're like getting ready to shower and go to bed. Flush the toilet. It isn't refilling. I'm like, oh, okay. No. <laughs> sick get in the shower start taking a shower and i notice the panel in the roof ceiling start to leak oh, in the ceiling yeah there's From like the a, i think it's it was happening more when i showered i think it's like a condensation thing for the ac unit okay so that starts pouring from the ceiling put a bowl <laughs> under it i'm like jesus throw all of the dirty clothes from the trip into the washer and press start, and immediately soapy water starts flooding out from underneath oh, it. Dude. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Shut Disaster. it off. Mopping everything up, putting bowls under, I'm calling the emergency maintenance line, and like, <laughs> leaving a message like, yeah, everything is wrong. <laughs> there is not one good thing about this apartment. <laughs> Move in ready my ass. You didn't even have the keys changed. Never mind, the washer <laughs> wasn't attached to the wall. The bathroom the plumbing was fucked. Like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, whatever. We mop shit up. I leave calls about the ceiling, the toilet, the washer. I'm like, mm -hmm. this is kind of a problem. What the hell, guys? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I get a call back from the maintenance guy saying like, 
hey, is it cool if I come at like 7 a.m. tomorrow, first thing of the day? I'm like, mm-hmm. I won't run laundry until then. Hope we don't have to take a shit. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. Uh, <laughs> go to the bedrooms. I'm like, all right, well, now we finally can sleep without alarms. We're going to bed at like 1030 or something. Yeah, Seven yeah, is yeah. the earliest we'd have to be up. And I go to twist the blinds shut so no light comes in. And the blinds in my room fall out of the <laughs> I really thought these issues were over with the water, but I guess not. <laughs> so I walk into this room, the spare bedroom where Hamza was going to sleep on the floor. Yeah. Just to test it. Test those blinds. They also collapse. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh like, my god. Who buddy, I think we got to just not touch anything else. We should go to bed now. <laughs> yeah, I think that they just owe you a security deposit at this point. <laughs> That's insane. Almost comedic, if you couldn't imagine the accumulated stress over right, re- yeah. ruining my vehicle over four days to get here on time yeah, for the appointments that I then had to reschedule anyway. <laughs> kind of funny in hindsight, but yeah, at the time I can imagine that be just maddening. <laughs> but on the bright side, the next morning the guy comes at like 8, 8.30, good enough, just mm. attaches the washer, I wasn't going to fuck with the plumbing, but like... Hooks it up, fine. It's worked since. Fixed something in the toilet tank. It's worked since, fine. Replaced a broken mm-hmm. piece of pipe in the uh, bathroom ceiling, so that's been good. And uh, I guess the blinds were just aged, like the plastic had kind of broken because it was just old plastic. Yeah. So same day, this dude is like in and out of my apartment five, six, seven times. Goes yeah. and like buys new blinds, and I have brand new bl- blinds in both rooms now. Beautiful. So like. It came together, and uh, they've been pretty responsive since. There was, like, water wasn't hooked up to the fridge, so the ice maker and the water dispenser weren't working. They fixed that, too. (laughs) Sink faucet in the kitchen was wiggly. Got a new one installed. Yeah. Dude, I'm so curious how much of this they knew beforehand, because it sounds like there are so many problems, and they're like, "Uh, we'll just wait for him to bring it up. (laughs) Well, they gave me 48 hours for, like, an inspection checklist to finish that and turn it back in. And I'm sure they were like, well, if it's more than 48 hours, it's on him. But uh, thanks to Homeowner Hamza, another huge help. We meticulously went through every room, every item. Like, I documented everything on the paper, took copies for myself, turned it in in 46 hours. Like, everything is on them. I captured it all. Right. So, yeah, the first couple of days in my new apartment were also not the de-stressing that I had hoped. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's leveled uh, yeah. out since. Yeah, Carter got here Friday night, had some overlap. We went out with the same med school students, me, him, Hamza, and uh, had some good times. And then today, Carter helped me hang up the whiteboard, the VR wires. You can see one of them. Oh, yeah, Mount yeah. everything up on the wall. So now, like, the apartment is basically all built. I just have, I don't know two medium boxes of random assorted junk that I'll have to Mm -hmm. fold into place over time. Right, right. But otherwise, everything is set up. I've got a computer. I've got internet, AC, cable. Not that I need that. Mm -hmm. Everything is good. Oh, dude, you're home. Hell yeah. (sighs) It feels like that happened as of this morning. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Well, I'm glad I'm catching you now and not at any point before this, I guess. (laughs) Didn't even have the time or presence of mind to say we should probably record an episode more than 24 hours before we post it until yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, I was I was thinking about that and I was like, I could probably get another last minute one in. I'm, not, I'm sure he has, you know, not that there's many things more important than this podcast, but I was like, he might have something more important going on right now. <laughs> there are a few things on the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, family... No, not family. I guess, yeah, your apartment. That's pretty much it, I think. <laughs> but we've got that rolling, and honestly, what more do you need? Yeah. So when do Excuse classes me. start with you? When are you When are you turning this whole thing around and getting out there and getting to work? 7.45 a.m. tomorrow, orientation <laughs> begins. <gasps> wow. Okay, quick turnaround. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, and uh, less than seven weeks... I found out about this med school acceptance. It's been less than seven weeks that I knew I was going to med school. Right, right. Jeez, what a whirlwind. (laughs) It has been a whirlwind, yes, I'll say that. 
But uh, we're, it's coming together. I've got a car appointment at 7 a.m. Dropping it off to get the headlights and wiring and all checked out. Hopefully the clutch too. And uh, Sam, again, what a solid dude. God bless him. Will be picking me <laughs> up from the mechanic and bringing me to orientation day one. Oh, nice. What a hero. Yeah. And uh, did you catch that fart over the mic? No, I didn't hear it, but we'll, we'll see. We could insert that as a sound effect. All right, easy enough. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, orientation begins tomorrow, and one week from tomorrow, I am in class at 8 a.m., like, actual lecture. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Dude, are you, like, so excited? <laughs> I'm starting to realize that med school's about to happen now that everything else has been taken care of. Right, right. Oh, my God. It's almost beginning to sink in that, oh, yeah, I'm here for school. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't imagine <sighs> myself back in a classroom situation at this point. Like, I feel like if I were to do my master's or something, it would probably just be one of those, like, shitty online things that a company pays for so that you have the piece of DeVry. paper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you should do ITT Tech. It just got all of the loans refunded as part of a for-profit scam that the government addressed. Really? <laughs> yep, $500 million in federal loans were refunded for victims of for-profit college scams, and I'm pretty sure I saw ITT Tech as one of them. I wonder what constitutes it as a scam and not as just expensive college. Probably, like, inadequate instruction and certification of instructor. Mm. Like, they might not be accredited to give degrees that they were or something like that. Okay. I don't know. I'm kind of guessing. Right, all right. I, all I know is it wasn't our loans that were repaid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if only. <sighs> That'd be nice, but we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully, Daddy Dude. Biden comes around. Oh, Papa Joe, come on, sleepy man. But, uh, dude, you talking about going to, like, all these different places, like, stopping in Charlotte, stopping in Memphis, it makes me realize, like, when people talk about travel, so often they talk about overseas travel, but there is so much stuff to see in America. A ton of it. Yeah. World's like, what was Memphis largest like? Uh, we, we actually didn't go into Memphis at all. We, uh, oh, okay. the way Hamza's friend painted it was that park was like the nice part of Memphis, <laughs> this oh, public okay, space. Yeah. But that area was like gorgeous, kind of across the lake. You could overlook the city some, but all green bike paths and hills, very wide open, especially compared to New England. Everything has so much more space. Hmm. <sighs> Yeah. I haven't caught up on sleep. Despite several nights without an alarm, I'm still waking up after like six, six and a half hours. Don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, dude, stuff like that takes a while. I'm sure some of the residual stress is still like in your bloodstream. <laughs> One day, I'll breathe. Maybe four years from now, maybe eight. One day. <laughs> I'll get there. By the time I die, I swear to God, I will have one restful night of sleep before I sleep for eternity. I just wish that when we were kids or... I guess high school, or whenever the last one was, I wish that I'd known that, that I would have appreciated <laughs> it so much more. <laughs> if you had, like, a little ticker, and it was, like, 18 days until your last restful night of sleep, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I did not take the time to be grateful, as I should have. Yeah, dude, when I was a kid, man, I could just wake up, and it was, like, an episode of Spongebob, like, literally just... Eyes open, sit up, like, straight spine, 90 degrees, Steve, just in bed, ready to attack my day. And, uh... All dunkaroos and The only time that's Captain ever Crunch. happened now... The only time that happens now is when I wake up and immediately realize that I've overslept, and... <laughs> and that's <laughs> Again, the Again, the stress takes over. Oh, yeah, no. But, yeah, adrenaline is the better than caffeine, I'll say that. That's why I just take a shot of that sucker every morning. <laughs> Really gets oh, me going. Hamza, Hamza was telling me that you also you started going to your BJJ gym down there already. One, I went to one <laughs> one trial class yesterday. Oh yeah, it is gigantic and very clean and very nice. And there were at, at the busiest in North Attleboro pre-pandemic, there were maybe twenty twenty two people in a class. Mm -hmm. And this like Saturday morning, there were I don't know maybe forty five people there. Okay, so. That alone makes it seem pretty great, but uh, the instructor seemed super, super good, super skilled, very funny, great jokes, and mm. uh, on top of that, immediately, I went to 10th Planet, which 
I don't know how much jujitsu lore knowledge, etc. you're familiar with, but I know everything about the sport. Like I'm kind of a master, but the audience might not. So go ahead and explain. Well, Tenth Planet was, I believe, initially founded by Jean Jacques Machado, who is like a the Gracie family kind of revolutionized it all in Brazil in the 1900s. And then that has bled out into what is the predominant popular form of jiu-jitsu. Brazilian jiu-jitsu is really, like, adapted from Japanese judo and jiu-jitsu by this singular family that were dominant mm-hmm. for years. And right. um, so there's, like, lineages for black belts in particular and instructors. And you can trace people back to what their, effectively, jiu-jitsu family tree is. Mm-hmm. And I think Jean-Jacques Machado is an L.A. guy that, I think that's who gave Rogan his black belt, but... He, oh, wow. I think, got it one directly from a Gracie, I think, maybe one degree removed. He's a disciple. And, uh, basically, yeah. <laughs> but he has a congenital deformity where I think he has like one hand, one finger and a thumb on one hand, so he can't grab and grip. It's what? a lot more like hooks and leverage positions. Yeah. So it was either him or his black belt, Eddie Bravo, who founded Tenth Planet, and it's very non-conventional. So Hmm. what I enjoy about that already is that I tend to be weird and bendy, which I know you do know. Mm -hmm. And I like to just kind of like be weird and funky and throw my legs in places. And it disrupts people who are more structured with their jujitsu knowledge and lets me survive against people who... I have no right competing with. Yeah, it's the most annoying fucking shit when you're fighting someone and they can just bend out of every position and they're never uncomfortable. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. So, uh, Tenth Planet and all of its locations since its founding in LA is known for being weird and wonky, in a term. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, they do all no-gi, which I prefer, like wrestling, grappling, you know, rash guards only, really. Yeah, yeah. And uh, while gi is nice and traditional and practical if it's self-defense and people have hoodies and jackets on i just like mm-hmm. nogi better it feels closer to wrestling and more like i don't know i get tangled less there's less fumbling for grips i, I like yeah it better. yeah right but they are exclusively nogi and also very weird like where the correct way to put a triangle in with your legs is one foot in the knee pit and then bend it over mm-hmm. what i learned yesterday was that if you have it part way down your calf and then rotate you have just a significantly tighter space that their head and neck are through so like it's improper mm. the way that i was learning it and the way most gyms would teach it but yeah. it's very very effective so right in a single one hour trial class i saw probably four or five variations of moves or moves that i had not just never learned in two years so far but never even seen mm. like it, it definitely stands out as like, ah, they're doing things different. And I kind of enjoy it. Hell yeah. It, it, it seems weird and wonky and a good fit for me because of that. Dude, you're going to be lethal pretty soon, huh? <laughs> and also unlethal. Once I get this okay. medical degree. Oh, true. <laughs> I'll be able to slay and revive. <laughs> <laughs> I can give take life and I can give it. Like a, a battle cleric. Notice. Yeah, <laughs> I am a god, and you shall kneel before me. Austin is very... We've seen some, like, Hamza and I, when we walked around the city, saw some motocross trailers with whole murals of, like, Jesus on the cross and scripture painted on the side. Oh, wow. And also, we've seen, like, vegan farmer's markets and hippie communes, and it is <laughs> all over the place. I love it. It has everything. It is mm. so inconsistent in a word (laughs) yeah eclectic maybe absolutely we saw the state capitol building and it's built to a fuck you scale like all the first floor (laughs) windows are 14 feet tall it's just mad it's three stories and the building's probably 80 feet tall and it just (laughs) contains one man's office (laughs) (laughs) it's Thing, things are just built bigger, for sure. The whole everything's bigger in Texas shit definitely evolved from some reality. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, they just got so much space to play with, I guess. Yeah, I have 10-foot ceilings in my apartment. Oh, what a dream, dude. I used to have high ceilings, and now I'm a Banging your head. animal. <laughs> a couple times. Dude, I... Oh, my God. I felt so 
stupid because we had this pull up bar <laughs> hanging from the door, and I walk. I was just like walking around and texting or whatever as you do, and I hit my head on it four times in a day. <laughs> I was like, this thing's got to come down, because I'm not going to just start paying attention, but <laughs> this has become a problem quite <laughs> That'd quickly. That'd be beyond reasonable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you expect to me to not? Again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you expect me to not look at my phone? Yeah, I have shit to do. People need to reach me. And who am I to not respond to them? Come on. Give the people what they want. Yeah. Want. Exactly. Ooh. Didn't expect my voice to still be breaking at 25, but here we are. <laughs> Maybe that means I'll grow notice. a beard soon. I'll make sure if, since I'll, I'll edit this one, I'll make sure to really amplify that voice crack. <laughs> that, that hadn't come up yet, but I was going to ask if like maybe we could do one more of those. Oh yeah, no, no problem. No problem Beautiful. at all. I will, I will say that I think most days of orientation end around 3.30 or 4, and I'm sure that there will be like get-togethers and like dinner and maybe some drinks out with other students yeah. sprinkled throughout this next week. But I definitely do have the time. We can rip out probably another easy two recordings in the evenings this week. Hell yeah, dude. And I should be able to do at least one, if not both, of those editings mm. to try and, you know, make up for what's been going down. Dude, yeah, the fan base is going to love it, dude. All this new Texas information that they're, they've never seen before. Yeah. What have I learned so far? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Very little. How many shirts mm. I go through. It's a right, lot. yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. But we've got laundry in unit, baby. Yeah, dude, that's hype. I know that your laundry situation at your old place was somewhat of a nightmare. <laughs> Coin op with one dryer for 18 apartments. <laughs> and the dryer didn't dry. It took two runs just to do it. Absolute garbage. Unbelievably garbage. <laughs> Could, uh, the downside is Texas is on its own grid, ERCOT. E R C O T, mm -hmm. and uh, basically because like, <laughs> fuck you, everyone else, and yeah. I guess it brings costs down. Except that there are still several generation systems that are offline thanks to the winter storm, so they've been asking Texans to ration electricity usage mm. as we're hitting weeks with ninety percent humidity in the mid nineties. <laughs> it's still technically spring, dude. <laughs> Dude, honestly, fuck Texas. If they're not letting you be a resident <laughs> yet because you're not a student, you don't owe them jack shit. <laughs> I did already register my business. Nice. Cook, Cook Tutoring Services is now a legally recognized business in Travis County. Oh, dude, that's a good plug for the podcast. You got, uh, you got any place that people can find you? You got a website? <laughs> I'm working on it, but I need my fucking loans to hit before I can pay the Squarespace subscription. <laughs> Dude, I've been watching Ozark lately, and so now I'm a master money launderer. I think that if Give you me let some. me handle your yeah, I'm sure if I if you let me handle the books, dude, we could totally launder some money through this uh through this tutoring business. It'll be cool. We just need to get in touch with the uh, the Mexican cartel. And oh, we'll word, be yeah. In business. <laughs> I'm much more local now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, dude, you you can be our uh, our emissary, our diplomat to the Mex to the cartel. Perfect. Just how I always wanted to do with my degrees. <laughs> You could be a regular Walter White of yourself. Science during the day, drugs at night. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> Dude, you're right. Yeah. If any medical school staff ever listen to this, it's a <laughs> joke. <laughs> no, it's fine. You're not doing drugs. I don't think they've ever oh, told you not right, to sell right. drugs. Or not even sell. You're, you're, you're facilitating helping business. the business. Yeah, exactly. Texas you're is so big far on... Removed. Texas is pretty huge on new job growth and you know business generation. So Exactly. I'm just contributing. Yeah, you're just a, a helpful member of the community. Look at that. I'm a stand-up yeah. citizen. I'm a stand-up money launderer. <laughs> anyway, what has been up with you since you last helped me move eight days ago? Yeah, what has been up with me? I don't know. I mean, after, after I helped you move, I ended up driving all the way down to Stanford. I was hanging out with John and his brother and some other people. Dude... I think I was kind of talking about this with John last episode, but man, I got to figure out how to talk to strangers. It's tough. Like, and it's not like I was particularly good at it before, but at least I was in practice where now, I don't know, maybe I should go back to bouncing or something and just reacclimate myself to a bar atmosphere because if I don't have like a mission, I remember just, it was wander, 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 always have a drink in my hand. And then 
make sure that the whole group stays together. Like, hey, you know where this kid is? No. All right, I'll go find him. Don't you worry. <laughs> Just Papa playing Steve. I Spy. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I felt the time was right, I gathered up everyone, made sure they knew I was going out to a food truck. Just, yeah. But, you know, one of these days, one of these days, we'll figure it out. You should take an improv class. Ooh, oh, hey, Frey's in frame. Yeah, but, yeah. uh... In frame, <laughs> um... Uh... Yeah, take uh, an improv, improv class. It, it was uh, one should. of the videos we had to watch before orientation starts tomorrow is why you want your doctor to be a good improviser, <laughs> which sounds <laughs> counterintuitive. Yeah. But it is, it was a woman who owns an improv theater here in Austin who, I, I guess, I did not know this, but apparently at Dell, we get at least like 10 hours of improv training, literally in the sense of like, better compassionate and conversational exchanges with patients and to better yeah. facilitate the flow of information and keep things like moving in an efficient sense. They literally mm. do improv classes with the med students. That does sound like an incredible skill to have. I will say though, was this improv woman, was she telling you that doctors should be good at improv or was she just telling you how to do improv? That they should be. It was a TED talk, I the think video that we she had to might... watch. She, really a tiktok ted talk oh a ted talk okay i was like this is a short seminar tedx yeah, like austin 30 seconds yeah but uh i don't know she said i feel like she might be biased on this you she's think? trying to sell improv to people you know what i mean she uh I, she has an ulterior motive i guess we'll see how these icebreakers go this week yeah you have to yes and your patience doctor just tell me do i have cancer uh not just cancer <laughs> Also, also AIDS. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He skipped HIV. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Carter and I rewatched all of Rick and Morty season four last night in ext in preparation for the new season to come out tonight. Oh hell yeah! By the time this episode goes up, that will have come out. Maybe. Oh wait, it's no, it's like ten my time, eleven yours airs. Yeah, and this is going out tomorrow. Oh, right. Today's Sunday. <laughs> Unless you want to live stream this, I could. The last few minutes. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, it's actually been really hard to keep track of what day is what since I, oh, I quit my imagine, job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to miss having income. Oh, God bless, man. Well, who knows, dude? This tutoring thing, you could build an empire down in Texas. At I don't know how schools least... are down there, but... Uh, a big Yankee man, big educated Yankee man coming down could be exactly what they need. It helps that I've, you know, taught at camps and third-party tutoring services and in high schools and everything else, like MCAT tutoring. I have kind mm. of teached, taught, and tutored every age and almost every subject from, like, six-year-olds up through college students. Right. And, uh... If anyone's now qualified to talk about anatomy or whatever the fuck, it should be me. So who are you going to be tutoring? Is this targeted? Probably undergrad students. Oh, We're right wow, next okay. to the UT campus, and there's 40,000 of them there. Right, I'm right. sure I can find someone who needs some cell bio or anatomy help. And don't let Texas hear, but this is more about operating a business continuously than it is right, about supplementing right. <laughs> my income. Than it is about educating the youth of tomorrow, the future leaders of tomorrow. <laughs> Listen, I did my time. <laughs> yeah, Manchester High School, shout out. Yeah, hey man, there's no reason why, you know, capitalism and virtue can't coexist. I think that it's best when it does. Absolutely. It's Ugh. better than uh, communism. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Communism can, again, suck my ass just like Arkansas. <laughs> Our communism... Oh, dude, if anyone from Arkansas ever heard you say that, you might be decapitated within minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's if I have to set foot in the state next time I drive through. Yeah, true. Yeah. Coincidentally, when I was talking to Monas later that very same day, mm. he, uh, on his trip down, which, oh, he had two friends who were able to drive his car also, and no trailer, so a little easier, no furniture or anything. Yeah, I'd imagine. But uh, he did the drive straight from Connecticut, 26 hours, no breaks. Wow, like, what a champ, dude. He Holy they cow. left at midnight, drove 12 hours, 
obviously like gas and piss breaks, but uh, mm-hmm. he took two hours sleeping and then jumped back in the seat, did the same thing, a little nap, and like finished it home at like whatever, 2 a.m. a day and a half later. God damn, that's wild. <laughs> took me four days, so there you yeah. go. But uh, they made it all but the way through Arkansas. Why? I mean, I guess they, it's cheaper to do that. It's a little bit more efficient he, and effective. He didn't have places to stay at. It was actually remarkable that we were able to stop at six places of people we knew. Seven, really. And, yeah, the, uh, and that you both knew like a good amount of people along the way, too. Along I don't know the way. how many people I would know. The base GPS route was 30 hours and 30 minutes. And with the stops in Charlottesville, Roanoke, uh, Nashville, Memphis... Addison, which was his other friend, and Dallas, it only added an hour and 40 minutes. Oh, wow, okay. So well worth it, it sounds like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just in the amount of motel money we saved, or whatever. Uh, Incredible. But anyway, yeah, Monus also, in his road trip, did not stop in Arkansas. That was their goal, and his car had the fuel efficiency to do it. Yeah, right, and not all the dead weight. <laughs> Seems like the thing to do. Avoid yeah. it if you can. Yeah, good to know. Yeah, good to know for the next time that you come down here to visit me, which is going to be... Soon. Hell yeah. For sure. (laughs) Hell yeah. Well, it has been a smooth, easy listening hour back on the fellas. Is there anything else we need to hit? I don't think so. I think we covered all of Zane and Hamza's excellent adventure. (sighs) The time travel bit was crazy. we both have been wiping sweat off our foreheads this entire episode. (laughs) I've got a beautifully powerful ceiling fan and central air. Nice. Oh, central air is quite the luxury. (laughs) It's incredible. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me back on. I'm glad John hasn't squeezed me out forever. Yeah, dude, it's getting close. You're going to have to watch your spot real close. (laughs) Has he edited an episode yet? He actually went back and re-edited all of them, and they're incredible. (laughs) Yeah, all like 70 whatever episodes, dude. He's, He's remastered them all. It's... It's something. <laughs> John Snyder's cut. He's also found us advertisers and everything, dude. It is... He might be trying to push both of us out, if I'm being honest. I'm a little worried. <laughs> Just a fella. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fella podcast. <laughs> Maybe he can get his insurance company to sponsor us. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be awesome. <laughs> It'd be pretty sweet. I'll start trying to touch base with some ground-level sponsors here in Austin, too. I'm sure they're not already inundated with podcasters. Yeah, although I will say, an insurance company whose entire purpose is to, like, calculate Limit risk. risk. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if they want their two advocates to be these guys, who, these two 25-year-olds. <laughs> a submarine engineer and a doctoral student? Come on. Yeah, true. true. We'd rep we them are well. responsible on paper. That is very true. <laughs> But not on air. No criminal record. That's good. <laughs> Passed a background check for school too. There's your proof. Hell yeah, yeah. They didn't. But find anyway, anything. yeah. I think we're. Uh, I think we're coming up on the end here. All right. Well, it's been a blast. Love Absolutely. you guys. Take Love care. You too, man. And thanks for listening to a couple of fellas. Yeah.